It's been a pretty rough year for the South African consumer. What was COVID-19, shutdown, various stages of lockdown, some segments not quite back to work yet, people taking pay cuts, people not being able to meet their financial obligations. And it just got a whole lot worse. This evening, Experian, one of South Africa's largest data aggregators, announced a data breach of some 24 million consumer records. Now we need to put that into perspective and explain why it's important to you. So who are Experian and what do they do? Well, Experian is an enormous company and they collect credit data, your ID number, your address, uh, property ownerships, credit activity, who you owe money to, how much you owe, how you pay it back, and of course, verification. They store sequence of questions that the bank can ask and expect answers from in order to authenticate you as their client. That's quite a serious responsibility. Their data has been breached. Now, what does this mean? Well, there's a difference between a hack and a breach. A hack is an intrusion by somebody using a specific set of techniques in order to gain illegal access into the network. Whereas typically, a breach is more a case of the data was not properly secured, it was leaking on a port, somebody happened onto it or went looking for it and was able to access that data. The last thing that you need to happen to a credit provider, especially one of that scale. Now let's think about the data itself that they have. How would they use that? Well, that data can be used in a number of ways. It can be used to create fake accounts in your name. It could be used to trick you over the phone into asking and asking that series of questions. And hopefully that data wasn't in the breach, but we don't know at this stage. It could be used for phishing, sending you very credible looking emails that have got your personal data in it. So it looks authentic and you're enticed to click on a link and verify by logging into your banking, for example. The amount of nefarious activities one can get up to with that data is absolutely endless. The possibilities are limitless depending, of course, what's in the data set. But the very thought is terrifying. 24 million records. Doesn't sound like a lot, really. I mean, it's a big number, but is it? Well, let's think about that. There are 60 million people in South Africa. That's all of them. How many of those 60 million are economically active? probably around 15 or 16 million, which means it's active data. It's data of people that have probably died already, that are no longer economically active. It's a very large segment of that database, if not all of it. This is a terrifying prospect. What do you need to do about it? Well, let's cut to the chase because that's the important part. First thing you need to do anytime there's a data breach, purely as a matter of course. Change your passwords, your banking passwords, your email passwords, just change them as a matter of course. It's good policy and practice anyway, and come on, it's been a while since you did it, hasn't it? Be skeptical of anybody asking for personal data on the phone, even if they offer up personal data to you. If it's not a call you're expecting, if it's not a call you're comfortable with, hang up, confirm the authenticity of that call before you carry on. Check your credit profile. Wait a few weeks. You are allowed one free downloaded view of your credit profile per year as a consumer. Take the opportunity. Get your credit profile downloaded. Make sure there's no activity on there that isn't yours. Look for any suspicious attempts to gain credit using your identity and your credentials. You should also, just as a matter of course, Check that your antivirus and your malware software is up to date. Hopefully that's obvious and you're doing it all the time anyway, but this is as good an opportunity as any to do so. Where does this leave us? Well, in a bit of a predicament because now we've got to be even more circumspect of 
emails that come from our bank and various retailers that we do business with. We've got to really make sure that they are who and what they say they are. You need to be a little bit more suspicious, a little bit more cautious of your mails before clicking on hyperlinks, at least for the direct future, but ideally permanently. How does this happen? Well, there's a number of ways, and without getting all geeky on you, the bottom line is that most breaches, I'm not saying this one, but most breaches come down to inadequate security and that the companies are not taking proper responsibility and accountability for the way that they work with consumer data. But we have laws to protect us against that, don't we? We have Poppy and Poke data. Where are all these laws? Why aren't they protecting us? Well, that remains to be seen. The last really large notable breach was the deed search data set in 2017, if memory serves, and that was quite a substantial amount of data. Again, it was 16 or 18 million South Africans that were compromised. To date, nobody has been held accountable, nobody has been put to task over the loss of that data, and the consumer has been left to accept the full unmitigated risk. Make no mistake, the breach is severe and hopefully in the coming days we'll understand a little bit more about the extent and the type of data that's been taken and we'll be able to gauge what the risk profile is and give you some more feedback as to what you can do to lower your own personal risk profile. Do follow the news to see as more data becomes available about the breach to understand the full extent of it and how it impacts on you. That's all for now. Stay safe.